Hi everyone and welcome back to Interview Chronicles Season 3. We are in the 44th episode of this series and we have Sahil here with us who has been placed at Siemens as a part of his campus placements at VIT. He is here to share his interview experience with us. But before we talk to him, let's look at the eligibility criteria for this company. So all the students belonging to CSE, ECE branches were eligible provided they had a 75% or a 7.5 CGPA in their 10th and 12th and an 80% or an 8 CGPA in the pursuing degree with no standing arrears. Now let's go ahead and talk to Sahil to understand his experience interviewing for this company. Well, firstly, welcome to my channel and congratulations on your placement. Um, would you like to introduce yourself first? Yeah. Hi, Chishnil. Thank you for having me on your channel. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Sahil and I'm currently pursuing my B.Tech in uh, Computer Science and Engineering uh, from VIT Vellore campus. And uh, yeah, I come from Dharadun, Uttarakhand. And uh, now I will be shifting to Hyderabad for my placement. Uh, for working in Siemens EDA, I got recently selected in Siemens EDA. Okay. I have done internship in uh, Exxon Mobil and uh, other two places I have done, but the most important one was on Exxon Mobil. Uh, I have hobbies including content writing and of course uh, competitive coding. Okay. So yeah, that's it about me. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much. Uh, you can now tell us about the placement process, like how many rounds were there and what happened. Yeah, so. If I correctly remember, uh, in the mid-August, uh, uh, we got the selection mail for uh, Siemens EDA. That's the time when the ca uh, company came. And uh, they had a barrier cutoff of 8 CGPA in uh, BTEC and uh, around 75 in 10th, 12th, uh, I guess, okay. and with no standing area. So after we applied, uh, there was a preliminary uh, selection round, uh, like the cutoff. Uh, they had selected uh, 150 or 160 students based on their resumes and CGPA cutoffs, everything. Right. After that, uh, there were uh, three rounds, I guess, yeah. So the first was uh, one online assessment, which we had given a labs. Hmm. Uh, yeah, and the online assessment had, uh, in fact, three more subsections. Uh, one consisted of the aptitude round. Hmm. Uh, the other we had of uh, technical fault finding, like the pseudo code thing, and uh, then we had the coding in the test. Okay. It was a two hour test. Uh, yeah, and the test included uh, concepts from all the everything that we have studied till now, all our core subjects. Okay. Uh, Netcom, communication, hmm. uh, C programming, C plus plus, Java, Python, and. Uh, and uh, coding questions, there were two coding questions. Right. Uh, one was of uh, RM manipulation. That was a very good question uh, because time complexity would keep on exceeding, exceeding. Hmm. We have to optimize it. Right. And the second one, if I correctly remember, it was of uh, dynamic programming. Yeah. Hmm. So I couldn't complete the dynamic programming one. Uh, it, I only passed two case cases out of four. Okay. Uh, but the aptitude and uh, technical was very solid. So. Okay. After that, they shortlisted around uh, 14 or 15 people for the interviews hmm. for the dev developer role, I'm telling. So, okay. yeah, they shortlisted around 14, 15 people. Uh, we had two uh, technical rounds. Uh, everyone had two technical rounds. After their two technical rounds, they shortlisted some people for another third round. Okay. So, yeah, the rounds were varying depending on the uh, basis they wanted. Hmm. So after two technical rounds, uh, I had one pure HR round, whereas some of my friends had uh, another technical round plus HR round. So okay. that was the process. In the technical round, uh, they had asked, uh, for in my case, they had asked everything uh, in DSA, like except graphs, hmm. all the topics were covered, be it trees, be it right. stack, okay. be it linked list, be it arrays, everything hmm. was covered. Be it okay. recursion, be it linked list, everything. So. That was a very good uh, DSA rounds that mm. I gave. Mm. And uh, for some of my friends, they asked uh, the resume, right. uh, the internships and everything. Mm. For me, it was pure DSA. And okay. one of my friends also, he had pure DSA rounds. Okay. They started with the basic concepts only like OOPS, mm. uh, Netcom, and then they started uh, moving towards DSA. Okay. So after that, uh, we got the call for HR around uh, in the evening, uh, like around six o'clock or seven o'clock, I got the call. Hmm. And uh, after that, uh, the calls, uh, 
uh, the HR round was pretty much chill. They had basic open-ended questions like, uh, do you have any interest right. in this field? Hmm. And the managemental questions, basically. Hmm. So after that, we got the mail in two days, the people who were selected. So that's it for the HR round. Okay. okay. Yeah. And that's it. Okay. And then you got the list, yes. right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Congrats again. And Thank you. do you have anything to share to your juniors or anything that you learned from your experience? Yeah. So for my juniors who will be starting to prepare for placements, DSA is the most important. Uh, mm-hmm. Everyone I know in on this channel and everywhere you will go, they'll say DSA is the most important. It mm-hmm. is the most important. It will help you in OS mm-hmm. in your technical interviews. If you have a good understanding of DSA, you can solve everything. Right. Uh, secondly, have a good uh, attitude for approaching a problem. Mm-hmm. Like uh, in my interviews uh, for this company only, I gave them all the optimized solutions. Right. So okay. in my second uh, interview also, my interviewer told me that you have given all the optimized solutions. I liked it, but I would have even liked it more better if you would have given me a naive approach and then built the mm. solution along with me. Okay. So try to have that attitude that, okay, first solve it in a naive approach and then try to optimize it. Mm-hmm. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, thirdly, I'll say set a goal, good goal, like... Uh, uh, you know your values, you know what hard work you have put in uh, mm. and don't settle for less, I'll say. Uh, be clear which companies you want to apply, which companies you want to leave out. Uh, mm. I, I Generally, I followed a strategy where I left a lot of companies I didn't apply mm. because I thought that the role they're offering is not the one I want. Correct. So okay. be clear in that sense, what role you want to apply and what companies you want to apply. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, find a hobby uh, to release your academic pressure that is piling upon you. Mm. Like uh, I am very good in writing. I like poem, poetry, everything. So that was an alternative I used to do for uh, releasing the academic stress. Mm. Mm. Uh, if possible, have good internships in your resume. It helps you during the HR rounds mm. because then you can actually tackle the questions the HR asks in a mm. much better and uh, settled way. Mm. And uh, yeah, I'll say stick to the basics. People will say CGPA doesn't matter, but I'll again say uh, having a good CGPA is a boost uh, on your resume because mm. it actually helped me a lot. Mm. And uh, if you have a good CGPA, it reflects that you are good in your core principles. Right. Oops, DVMSO. Yeah, so that's it I like to say to my juniors. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much. And okay. I'm sure it's going to help many people. Yeah, thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, thank you, Jason. Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching and please do like, share and subscribe if you did find find this video helpful and yes, thank you for watching.